HR Party of One is brought to you by Bernie Portal, the all-in-one HRIS that saves you time so you can foster a better place to work. In this episode, we'll discuss what the FLSA duties test is, why it's important, and what duties qualify for FLSA exemption. Shipcom, a computer software company in Texas, incorrectly applied the duties test, misclassifying their non-exempt employees. Therefore, as a result, they were not receiving the overtime pay they should have been. While Shipcom fixed the error and paid their employees what was owed to them, they still sued. What were the consequences of Shipcom's mistake? Stick around to the end to find out. But first, what is an FLSA duties test? The Fair Labor Standards Act, or FLSA, duties test is a list of criteria that an employee must meet in order to be classified as either an exempt or non-exempt employee. In the duties test, if an employee does not meet the criteria, they are considered a non-exempt employee who is paid an hourly rate and is eligible for overtime pay. I'll cover the classifications for exemption in a bit, but let's first talk about why the duties test is important. The duties test is important because HR must properly classify their employees as exempt or non-exempt in order to avoid serious penalties from the Department of Labor. Any employee can be non-exempt, but in order for an employee to be considered exempt, they must meet the criteria on the duties test. The DOL can publicly shame a company for misclassification, which would be a poor reflection of the company and can be detrimental to recruitment processes in the future, as well as employee retention. If current employees realize that their own company may not have been appropriately paying them or their colleagues, they may not feel a sense of trust in their leaders. A poor workplace morale would begin to sink in and those that have been underpaid are likely to quit. What duties qualify for FLSA exemption? The DOL has increased the minimum salary threshold for exempt status from a weekly pay of $684 to one of $1,059. This changes the annual pay from $35,568 to $55,068. This change will be reflected within the FLSA duties test and what qualifies an employee for exemption. There are six categories of employees who may qualify for FLSA exemption. These include executive employees. In order to qualify, they must be compensated on a salary basis as defined in the regulations of at least $1,059 weekly. Their primary job must be in a leadership function over a department, subdivision, or company-wide basis. They must regularly manage at least two or more full-time employees or full-time equivalents. They must be decision makers in cases of hiring or firing, even if they do not directly have the responsibility of hiring or firing. Their position must affect those decisions. Administrative employees. In order to qualify, they must be compensated on a weekly basis as defined in the regulations of at least $1,059 weekly. Their primary job must involve office or non-manual work directly related to management or business operations. Their primary job requires a level of discretion and independent judgment to be exercised while fulfilling the duties of their role. Professional employees. There are two categories for professional employees, learned and creative. In order to qualify as a learned professional, they must be compensated on a salary basis as defined in the regulations of at least $1,059 weekly. Their primary duty must require advanced knowledge described as predominantly intellectual work. The advanced knowledge must be in a field of science or learning. The advanced knowledge must be customarily acquired by a prolonged course of specialized intellectual instruction. In order to qualify as a creative professional, they must be compensated on a weekly basis as defined in the regulations of at least $1,059 weekly. Their primary duty must involve a creative pursuit, such as invention or the application of their imagination to achieve within their role. Computer employees. In order to qualify, they must be compensated on a weekly basis as defined in the regulations of at least $1,059. They must work as a computer systems analyst, computer programmer, software engineer, or other similarly skilled worker in the computer field. Outside sales employees. 
in order to qualify, their primary duty must be making sales as defined in the FLSA or obtaining orders or contracts for services or the use of facilities for which a consideration will be paid by the client or customer. They must work outside of the office or place of business in an effort to fulfill the duties of their role. Highly compensated employees. In order to qualify, they must make $143,988 or more annually and are further defined by the DOL and FLSA as those customarily and regularly performing at least one of the duties of an exempt executive, administrative, or professional employee identified in the standard test for exemption. They must make at least $1,059 weekly as a salary or hourly or fee basis. So if a high performing employee makes at least $1,059 weekly in base salary wages and then earns up to $143,988 in commissions or bonuses, then they are ineligible for overtime pay under current legislation. Now that I've given you a full breakdown of the FLSA duties test and what differentiates an exempt employee from a non-exempt employee, let's get back to Shipcom. So what exactly happened? Well, as Shipcom was unable to provide any proof as to whether the act of underpaying their employees was pure ignorance, the jury ruled otherwise. The court decided Shipcom was intentionally deceptive, resulting in double back pay to every employee affected. Shipcom not only had to pay what was owed, but double that in an effort to repair the damages to the employees who were not compensated for their overtime work. If Shipcom had applied the duties test correctly and double-checked its numbers using an accurate time and attendance feature of an HRIS, they may have avoided such hefty fines. That's it for this HRFAQ. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notifications about our newest episodes, which are released every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, thanks for watching.